All right, Andrew Eason here of the ESUCC, and I am grateful to Otis Pierce of ESU7 for joining me for a little conversation about using Edpuzzle in a remote setting. And I'm going to kind of uh, take the lead a little bit here on this one. Edpuzzle is one of my favorite tools to use because I really like to leverage video for uh, instructional purposes in class, whether that's during normal times uh, or in a remote setting. And so if you are someone who utilizes video, and this could be anything from a screencast where you're just capturing what's on your screen and adding audio to that, or going into a little bit more of a full-blown production where you're filming yourself and maybe adding in clips and, and getting a little fancy with it. Um, in either case, you could take that video that you've created and drop it into Edpuzzle um, in the same way, honestly, that you could uh, bring things in from Vimeo, from Explain Everything, from YouTube. Uh, but what Edpuzzle does is it allows you to build questions into that instructional piece that helps to keep learners uh, accountable for having watched it because you actually get feedback on the back end of what they watched and how far into the video they got, but then also to keep them engaged and to make sure that they are actually processing the information that they're being exposed to in that format. Uh, and uh, I would encourage you to check out the podcast that we've linked here. I got a chance to visit with the CEO of, of Edpuzzle, and uh, he was a classroom practitioner himself. So we shared a little bit about some of the things that led him to the development of that product uh, and also some just really cool insights. Um, it gives you a little bit of a sense of what it looks like from the teacher's end from his comments, uh, like what information you get and how you can best utilize that. Um, and in addition to that, too, he even has some simple uh, tips like, hey, don't build a question in every 15 seconds. Maybe wait and do three of them a minute at a time, uh, for example. So, Otis, what's been kind of your experience with Edpuzzle? Yeah, you know, having those questions built in there so that the students have to answer those questions. But you can also set it up so that they can't skip the sections. They actually have to watch all of it before they answer it, which is kind of nice too. So they just can't hurry and rush through and you know, they're having to pay attention. Uh, one thing I really like on the back end on the teacher side is you're able to see how often a student watched each of those segments. So you'll know if, um, you know, for example, Andrew watched this section five times, I maybe need to touch base with Andrew on this piece of it to make sure that he understands that content that's in there. If it only took them one time, they're understanding that content probably that's in there. So if there's a multiple time, that's maybe a red flag to go, hey, I need to touch base on this piece, which is kind of a nice feature of that as well. Um, and it will integrate, Edpuzzle will, can integrate with Google Classroom, Canvas, any other learning management system. So it doesn't have to be just a standalone. Uh, you can keep it right there. I've had some teachers that really, really like it um, because of some of those things and some of those features. And once they see it, they're like, oh, this is exactly what I needed to make sure that students watch things. Because um, I've had teachers, how do I know a student has watched a video? Edpuzzle, because you Ed can puzzle. stop those, put those questions in. You're able to see on the teacher back end what they've done. Um, pulling in, as Andrew said, your own video, something from YouTube, uh, something from Vimeo. Uh, there are also teacher created ones on there that you could go and look and find too that you may like and you may want to use. Um, so you're not in a way having to reinvent the wheel, uh, but you can also go in and add your own questions in there too if you want. Oh, and I'm gonna get excited to share one of my favorite things to bring up when it comes to remote learning uh, is that oftentimes when we're required to be synchronous, we think that that then means that direct instruction must be synchronous. And then teachers, uh, this is the experience, right? You have students that show up late. And so you have this doorbell going off as you're trying to get started with teaching a class. Uh, you can't see half the students and it's tough to have a good energy, I think, and feel like the, your audience is engaged. Um, and so to kind of avoid that, that rush and, and the chaos maybe is a better word mm -hmm. as you're getting started with class, what if you started with a direct instruction piece that was the most concise version of you presenting a piece of information? They go through an ed puzzle, so you can guarantee that everybody's gone through that, particularly at their own pace, which is really great. And then as students come in, you can troubleshoot, answer questions, point them to that resource. And as they finish early, invite them, if they're going through that ed puzzle in a breakout, invite them back uh, and start to have a, an informal discussion that extends what they learned in that uh, breakout where they were individually watching this video. And so you're like, wait, wouldn't Ed Puzzle be only for asynchronous or, or kind of flipped? No, you can actually leverage that live in a way that I think um, makes a lot of sense and can kind of add some, I would just say fluidity to yeah. <laughs> the rhythms of your, your remote um, synchronous time. And to add to that, you know, it doesn't ha just have to be for remote learning. 
you know, as Andrew said, it can be synchronous. Hey, I'm face to face with kids and I have my entire class face to face and I don't have anybody on Zoom or anything. I can use it almost as a station in a station rotation for blended learning. I can still use it as those pieces. So this is something that can be used not only remote to help put things forward, but even if we're when we're back to normal uh, <laughs> as well. Exactly. And that's something that we just encourage you to check out the podcast because uh, we got a chance to really speak to some of these ideas and more um, with Kim Sabria, the CEO and co-founder of Ed Puzzle. So hopefully this has been helpful. Highly recommend this tool. Um, so check it out.